to Lewis, the run around with Jack, able to stand Jack, but no one to pass it to, and he's come in for some pretty heavy work too. Brent Todd in there to do some heavy work as Roach carries a couple of the Kiwi forwards with him. Inside New Zealand territory now in this third test match. Line side goes Sterling you running on American the soil, the undefeated Jeff Fennick. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner is... To be honest, I always wanted to be what Blocker was. I wanted to be a rugby league player. Um, I got into boxing by accident and I was um, able to do amazing things. I went to the Olympics in uh, 84, I was world champion in 85. Um, you know, I was uh, the quickest person ever to win three world titles undefeated. My record was only broken last year. Well, I was just a young fellow growing up and idolising, you know, Bobby Fulton and Graham Langlands and all those sort of guys that were from Wollongong, where I originated from. And just watching all those guys and thinking one day, you know, I'd love to, love to play in the same sort of arena as those guys. Oh, well, um, yeah, I can see my opponents tiring and hurting and, um, yeah, I'm, I want to. I want to finish a fight. I want to. I want to knock him out. Of course, I'm proud to win, but I'm not proud of, of hurting anybody anymore. I love being in that team environment. I love. I love going away on tours, and I, I love being around blokes who had the same sort of um, ambition as yourself. But just the fun times, the mateship. No, she's beautiful. What sort of stage do you think, oh, I'm going to throw that white towel in now? Yeah, um, because I've seen, again, I've seen the ramifications, I've seen some of my uh, close friends and I kind of think to myself, wow, there are guys I used to box, Steve, I used to punch their heads in every day. I u we used them as, as punching bags. And look, today, I might sound fine that, but there are days blocked that I do something and 30 minutes later I forget it, right? I organise to do something at 12 o'clock and it's 11.30 or quarter to 12, it's five past 12. God, I'm supposed to be somewhere. I just forget. I mean, look, um, yeah, I don't want to put anybody else in that position. Now, we, we, we love this, but I mean, you know, yeah, we think that's great, but it, yeah, I don't know if it really is. That, that's what we've done, that's what you've done in the day. That's, it was yeah. state of origin in those, in those days, that's how it was, you know, it was, it was sort of uh, get or got, get got, that if you were playing for Australia or you were playing in a state of origin, you were expected to try and take the opposition on, and that was just, I don't know, that yeah, was just part of it. You're expected to inflict hurt, that's, yeah. that, we're in the hurt game. Well, it's pretty hard to explain because you, <laughs> you don't really remember. I got asked the question a lot of times: How many concussions did you have? And I, but it's hard to it's hard to remember. But then the question was put to me: How many times did you see you know like the white dots in front of your in front of your head in front of your eyes? You know, well that that would would happen would happen quite regularly, not, if not every week. So I don't know. The other thing for me too is is denial. I was in denial for a long, long time. Just you know, forgetting things and, you know, and my wife, my wife, Kathy, actually noticed it, but she never said anything to me because she wanted me yeah, to, she, she wanted me to come you. to her and say, yeah. you know, look, I'm having, I'm having a few problems, whatever, you know, memory and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, you know, talking sentences and, and like forgetting words during when, what you, you're trying to talk. But the thing that really upsets me is, like I said, there are so many other people who just played second grade or third grade or reserve, and they need help as well. I don't want to see people suffer. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a lot of mates who have had a, a lot of concussions and all that sort of stuff, and, you know, to see them with their families and, and to see them not even wanting to get out of bed to go and to do a job, I mean... I'll tell you, know, you why it's so important. Let yeah. me tell you why, because it's, it's quite simple that if something happened to Blocker Roach or if something happened to Mario Fennick or to Benny Elias... We're all, we're all aware, we're, we're, we're aware of it and we're alert to that. But when it happens to Joe Bloggs while he played second grade, nobody cares about it. Macquarie University cares about everybody and that's, that's the reason why I'm sitting here. You know, we, we talk about suicide and we, we talk about helping a mate and talking to people. There's more to it than that. We've just got to 
try to make it as good as we can and um, look after the fighters. When I think of this fight, I think of total neglect from Jeff Horn's trainer. I thought that um, you know, um, you know, asking him questions and, and, and letting him you know, cop what he was copying. I'd like to think that um, the way I'd like to, to correct this is I'd like to put his trainer in the ring and let somebody punch him in the head so many times and see what it's like. I, I thought the towel should have been thrown into the third round. We need we need funding and we need we need the, the people who have made all the money out of you guys to, to give something back. The, the other thing we've got to do is try and try and work out how we can afford to help those other people that can't afford to help themselves. Well, that's, we a, that's the thing. No, we're so that's, and that's the thing that upsets me the most for winners is we can afford to help. The NRL make millions of dollars. They do a bi couple billion dollar deal with the TV. You mean to tell me they can't give some of that money to look after some of these people to help Macquarie University? When I, when I look at it, um, it's sad. We just need to um, have a, a better legislation. We need to have better people um, that allow these people to be trainers and referees and officials as well because mate, the referees... Um, the referees in some of the fights over the last few months have been just as bad as the trainers because they've let them go on as well. Collision sports and, and physical sports like boxing, I, I don't see how we're going to stop the collision. I don't see how we're going to stop. I mean, I think the whole thing needs to be looked at and um, as well as just the competing on, on, on game day or on, on fight night, we've got to also think about our training techniques and making sure that the, the, the young guys aren't getting hurt as they're growing up and well, getting concussed. We see it a lot now in rugby league too, now during the training. Like a lot of people only see the game day, as you mentioned, the game day where people actually go there and watch people play. But they have scrimmage every week. Scrimmage is is like going at a game, opposing your teammates and playing against, you know, playing against your teammates. And, and the instructions from the coaches and the people who are doing it is you've got to go as hard as you can. Yeah until everybody's under the same banner and doing the same thing, um, we're always going to have people trying to take shortcuts or people cheating, people getting away with things that, because, they, because they want to win. I'd like to do it, I'd, I'd like to do it, like, if, if I was going to do it, do it privately and just have no fanfare really about it, you know? Yeah, well, I've done it, but I've, uh, and I haven't done it for fanfare, but I'm, I'm not sure they're going to find much oh, in my blog. They probably but won't look at um, mine anyway. Yeah, I'm, um, I've always thought, ah, you know, once you face it and you, you go and get the tests and you do all the things that you're supposed to do, um, it's, it's a weight off your shoulder. And you can see the relief in your family. Even, you know, I've got three sons, you know, and, you know, my wife talks to my sons about this sort of stuff too. And, you know, they tread around me even better now. Do you know what I mean? Like they understand that I know about what's going on. So it's a relief for the whole family. And they're the, they're the people you've got to think about. Like, if anything ever happened to me and I'm gone, you know, you leave your family there, you know, to, to pick up the pieces, and that's, that's not a good thing.